Do you ever practice in Adobe Illustrator? In this video, I'm gonna show you something that I think is worth practicing, and that's using the Reflect tool with keyboard shortcuts. And this is gonna help you mirror and reflect things very precisely, quickly, and it's gonna save you a lot of time. So in this video, I've broken down the steps so that you can practice bit by bit, and there's a file below the video to help you follow along with me. And if you get the shortcuts under your fingertips and you start using this in your everyday work, I promise it's gonna catch on. It took me a little while to do it, but now I don't even think about it. And it's been years that I've been using these shortcuts. So let's take a look. So to begin, we're gonna use the keyboard shortcut to get the reflect tool, and that shortcut is O. So first thing you wanna do is select your object that you wanna reflect, and then tap O on your keyboard. Now the way I remember O is I think of O as a circle, as a symmetrical object. And that's how I remember that it's the shortcut for the reflect tool. Now, once you've tapped O, you're gonna see this point in the center of your object. It's really centered in the bounding box of the object. And this is the point along which you're going to reflect. But the next thing you have to do is tell Illustrator what axis you want to go along. And so here, I've drawn some axes in the background here. Uh, you don't need these, but it's just to help us through this first exercise here. And so what I'm going to do is just pretend that there's an invisible axis here. And I'm just going to do a short little drag like that. And you can see it flipped the house, but it's doing it kind of crookedly. So I'm going to undo and just get it straightened again. And this time, I'm gonna do that short little drag while holding shift. So just hold shift and then just do a short little drag like that. And now we are reflecting on the vertical axis. And you don't have to be all the way down here. You can actually be really close, but you don't have to be accurate because you're holding shift and that's just making it straight. Now we've done the vertical axis, let's do the horizontal axis. So my center point, of course, is already there by default. And then I'm just thinking of an invisible line here, holding shift, and then I'm just gonna do a short little drag and I flip the house when I release, like that. So once you've learned to do this, it can save you time. Now, there are buttons over on the properties panel, and these are really fast, and I love using these buttons, but if you don't have the properties panel open, it might be faster for you to just select your object, tap O, hold shift and drag. So far we've been dragging, but if we click, we're actually resetting the point. So your first click sets the point. So if I want to reflect along the base here, then I would click to set that point and then I would drag holding shift to flip along that point. And likewise here, I would click to set the point and then just drag to flip like that, holding shift. Now you might've seen, I have my smart guides on and that can really help if you wanna use a path or an anchor point to really get accurate in setting your reference point. So to turn on smart guides, use the keyboard shortcut, command or control U. So this turns it off and on, command or control U turns it off and then Command or Control U turns them back on. And then when you hover, you can see that little indicator there. Click, you set your point accurately, and then you can shift drag like that. So far, we've been dragging from the center point or clicking to place the point and then dragging. But you can also click and then click. So let's try that. I'm gonna click to place the point, and then rather than dragging, I'm gonna actually click here to reflect. So clicking to set the point and then my second click reflects. And this can be really fast too. Sometimes we want to drag because we want to choose an angle freely, but other times you may want to do two clicks. Click to set the point and click to reflect. All right, now we're going to take it up a notch and make copies as we reflect. So grab the house, tap O on your keyboard, Click once to set the point. And then before you make that second click, hold down shift and option alt. And you see how the cursor changes to that double arrow. So we know we're making a copy. 
and then click to mirror the copy. We'll practice this a bit more. So click to set the point, shift, option, alt, click to reflect. Then click to set the point, shift, option, alt, and click to reflect. The copy is already selected, so I don't have to hit O again. Just click to set the point, shift and option alt, and click to reflect. One more time, click. Click to set the point and click to reflect. So far, so good. All right, now here are a couple of tips. So you know, if I click on the artboard now, that would be setting the reflection point because your first click sets the point. And watch, when I hold down the Option or Alt key, you're gonna see that little dot, dot, dot next to the cursor. Well, if I click now holding Option Alt, I open the Reflect Tool dialog box. And this is the case for a lot of dialog boxes or tool dialogs in Illustrator. Holding the Option key when you click brings up the settings. And that's gonna interrupt our flow here. This is a perfectly valid way to work, but we're just trying to do things fast and in the flow. So just keep your eye on the cursor as you're reflecting so you get that feedback. You know that your first click sets the point and then it's safe to hold Option, Alt, and Shift to reflect along this axis like that. Another thing that can happen uh, as you're working fast is you don't select the, the house itself. So if I tap O on my keyboard, yes, I have the reflect tool, um, but I can click and click and I'm like, why is it not reflecting? That's because I didn't have the object selected before I tapped O to get the reflect tool. Next level, we've been doing horizontals and verticals. This time we're gonna work with some angles. And if you're still with me, bravo. And if you practiced, oh my God, you're amazing. <laughs> so let's start. I'm selecting it, clicking O on my keyboard, and we've got you know our horizontal and vertical here, but shift will also constrain to these 45 degree angles. So I'm gonna tap once to set the point, then shift, option, alt, and click to reflect. Same thing with the copy. Click to set the point, shift, option, alt, and click to reflect. And let's just do it one more time to complete this. Click to set the point, shift, option, alt, click like that. So we don't have to use shift to constrain. We can do any angle we want. And so let's do that now. I'll click to set the point and then hold option, alt, and click. I'll come over here, select this house, tap O, click to set the point, hold option and click to reflect. And we're off and running with angles. All right, so you've got the fundamentals down. And in the next examples, I just wanna show you quickly how you can use these things in your own projects and how this is gonna help you work. Pattern design is a great use case for reflecting on the fly. And I have some motifs here and this is how I would use this. So I've got one motif selected and I wanna make a mirrored copy of it because we have to make a lot of mirrored copies at different angles to add variety to a pattern. So I'm gonna tap O and then place the point. And now I'm gonna hold Option Alt and just drag. I'm not holding Shift or anything. I'm just dragging here to find sort of the perfect angle that I want. And then I can release like that. Maybe over here, I'll do this again and tap O and place my point hold Option Alt and drag to get one that's upside down. And that was a lot faster than rotating it separately from mirroring it. So it's just gonna help you add some you know, variety to the copies that you have of your motif and then you can go and arrange them more artfully. But this is a nice on the fly way of working. Oh, and of course this works in pattern editing mode too. And then for decorative art that has to be symmetrical and precise, this works really well. So I can just copy it and reflect that perfectly. Use the Shape Builder tool to unite these. And the shortcut is Shift-M. And if I zoom in, you know, because I use my smart guides, I can tell that's just one point there that I even made out of those two shapes. So I'll just do this again 
clicking first to set the point, and then with Option Alt and Shift to make that reflected copy that's very precise, and then using the Shape Builder tool to unite them. And then I flip the fill on the stroke just to have the shape like that. And then I'm going to take the rest of this art and flip its fill and stroke, Shift X, and then I can mirror them by finding that center point there and Option Alt Shift clicking. So the shortcuts just save me a lot of time, but I can still be very precise. Here's one last example, and this is kind of a combination of these techniques. So I've got my motif selected. I'm going to tap O to get the reflect tool and click here to set the point. Hold Shift and Option Alt and click to reflect it on that axis. Now I'm going to reflect the copy by first clicking here to set the point. And this time I'm only holding Option. I'm not holding Shift. So Option Alt here is making the copy, but I can choose exactly what angle I want without being restricted by the Shift key. So now I want to take this and reflect it over to the other side. So I'm going to find a point in here with my Smart Guides and then click to set the point, start dragging Option, and then Shift is going to snap it into place. I've made a perfect reflection there. And then if I want to reflect all of this down, tap O, I'll set the point down here, hold Shift and Option Alt, and click to reflect it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and that you give it a little practice and let me know what you think in the comments. My name is Laura Coyle. I'm an illustrator who teaches Illustrator here on YouTube, and I would love to have you as a subscriber. So please hit that button. And if you want Illustrator tips delivered straight to your inbox, then sign up for my email list and I'm going to send you my best tips. All right. Thank you so much for watching.